Now, if you've been keeping up with the recent videos, you know that my Punto isn't particularly healthy. It is rusty as heck. I've now started to think about uh, the next project car. We've got the BMW Z3. <laughs> Supercharger noises! That's only got two seats. And so for some sort of day-to-day family duties, I do need a four-seater car. That's the theme of today's episode, is finding my new four-seater project car that I think is interesting, it's fun, and isn't gonna cost the earth. Ooh, starting up right away, the uh, Alfa Romeo Brera. Now, that's got a 3.2 litre V6 engine. What year is it? Ooh, it's a 56. That could be the expensive tax. Let's have a look. Let's look at running costs. £735 for tax. I think we'll be giving that one a miss. Now, this is going to be one of the biggest challenges for the second-hand car market, or particularly owners of second-hand cars, because from 2006, the uh, tax bans are a lot more expensive, the, the more sort of CO2 that you emit. And so that's fine if you have a very uh, kind of cool car, a prestige car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, think about your Ferraris um, or your Lamborghinis. You know, paying a lot for tax isn't really going to bother you because it kind of is an expensive car to run. That's just the cost of doing business. However, for your uh, less prestigious bands, let's think about this Alfa Romeo uh, GTV. Um, or oh, sorry, this Alfa Romeo Brera. It's a 2006 car. It's got a 3.2 litre V6 that isn't really technically even an Alfa Romeo engine. It's a GM engine. And that is... £735 to tax. £735 to tax. A car that dynamically isn't all there. It's quite big, it's quite heavy. And it's just not, it's not enough to justify that, that cost of entry. £735 a year, and that will be going up yearly. So that could easily reach £800 or £900 a year. And so if you have a car that's, you know, sadly emitting a lot of CO2, it needs to be cool enough, interestingly enough, to really justify that price. And I think you'll start to see used car prices really reflect you know, that increase in tax. Because this car is up for 3995, so well within budget, but the tax alone, you know, say if it goes up to sort of 800, 900 pounds, that you'll be paying sort of multiple of the car's worth in after sort of like four or five years just in tax, ignoring servicing, ignoring the fuel costs. And so it just doesn't make sense to pay that much car, or sorry, it doesn't make sense to make, pay that much tax on a car that's kind of as pretty as it is. And I do think the Brera is a fantastic looking car. It's just too much to pay 735 pounds worth of tax. You know, if you've got your Aston Martins, your Maseratis, all that sort of stuff, totally worthwhile. Cost of, cost of doing business. But for meh, humdrum cars, I just can't, I can't see it. Let's continue to see what we can find. Um, oh, there's the Alfa Romeo Mito. Um, 3,795 pounds, 60,000 miles. 1.4, eh, I think, you know, I've had the Punto. I don't really necessarily want a little tiny hatchback again. You know, even if it does technically qualify because it's got four seats. You know, uh, the Mito, I don't know. There's something about the design that's never really spoken to me i don't know what it's missing because i think objectively it's a pretty car it just doesn't doesn't call to me doesn't i don't know what it's lacking it just feels like you know a run-of-the-mill super mini and i guess that's technically what it is but meh, uh, i just don't really doesn't really do it for me let's continue let's see what else we can find um ooh, julietta okay ooh, that's diesel hell no don't want a diesel um yeah, I think diesels also are going to kind of lose a lot of money uh, over the next couple of years because the the bottom, I think, is well and truly dropped out of the diesel market. Used to be the in thing in the sort of the early noughties. Now no one wants them. So it's just, ugh, yeah, can't can't touch a diesel. And a diesel Alfa Romeo, it, I think you need to have a nice petrol engine in an Alfa Romeo, be it an inline four, a V6, whatever. But you certainly don't want a diesel so the alfa romeo gt okay not necessarily as pretty as say the brera but it is lighter and the chax is cheaper 415 pounds not cheap but cheap definitely cheaper than 735 i think 415 pounds is a more than acceptable amount of tax for a car this is only the 1.8 so i was kind of hoping the tax would be a little bit less if i'm honest 
maybe it's just a not particularly efficient engine or the GT is more is heavier than I was, I was thinking it to be Ooh, it does look nice though those wheels do look spectacular that is uh, the rest of the interior is meh it's okay functional I guess there's some nice touches there's some nice hints um, it feels like the GT really is just a stretched 147 it looks exactly the same and I think perhaps that's why the, the values aren't as good because it seems like a less practical 147 although it does have a hatchback boot I don't know could be an option five speed gearbox twin spark so similar engine essentially to the one I've got in the Punto but I think it has a slightly stronger bottom end and is a different cam but fundamentally very very similar can we get a 147 GTA in this price bracket. My hunch is no. But again, we can dream, people. We can dream. What can we get? They're, they're all T-Sparks. They're all boring. I don't want a 1.6 T-Spark. I think one of the big challenges is can I get that beautiful Busso V6 engine for under four grand that isn't completely rusty to heck? Let's see. So GTV, that would be a great, a great option. But again, trying to find a Busso V6, I think you'd have to settle with the twin spark and I think you'd be missing out if I think if you want the GTV you really got to get it with a three liter v6 it's a beautiful engine stunning to look at under the bonnet um, that I think is a definite car I'd like to get is is something with a Busso v6 but trying to find that under four grand eh, that's going to be the big challenge folks oh there are two two with a three liter engine so one is that Brera that we already found um, technically not, a, I don't think it's a Busso V6 and there's also the really big tax. Oh, hello. Ooh. Now, okay, stick with me here because I don't think there's a, a car that is more definition of a Marmite car than the Alfa Romeo 166. But if you find the right one, it does come with a Busso V6. So I'm looking at a, a Alfa Romeo 166 3 litre uh, Sportronic Alfa Romeo 166. Okay, it's got like a four-speed automatic gearbox. It apparently has like active learning. It's supposed to adapt to the driver every sort of 10 seconds or some some crap, but I doubt that is the case. I think it's quite a sluggish gearbox. And the looks are very much love them or hate them. I really like them. I've always liked the 166. And okay, those seats are a bit meh. Very sort of velour interior. And velour was like a big thing in like the 70s, wasn't it? And it's kind of fallen away. And I don't know why, because they, I think they last better than leather and they require much less maintenance. I don't know. But I think you can get these in some amazing leather interiors. So, you know, could be nice. And this is probably the cheapest way into a Busso V6, even if it does have a crappy automatic gearbox. So if I could find a Super Luso Alfa Romeo 166 with the Busso V6, that's the manual gearbox with a leather interior, chef's kiss, that would be awesome. But they are rare as hen's teeth. So this being the, the Sportronics, not necessarily the end of the road, um, but perhaps something, you know, that could be a car to monitor for the future. Um, let me know if you think I should get one. I guess we could start with Arbath, see what we can find. An Arbath Grande Panto, it's a 1.4 turbo. Um, shout out to, to Auto Animals, he's another YouTuber that's got a, a Punto that he loves to bits. Um, check out his channel. Uh, do I want to get another Punto? Uh, I think realistically no, just because it's always nice to try something else. So. Um, I think that's just, it doesn't make sense to do the right now. So I, I don't think a Punto really makes sense. We've already done Puntos. I think I need some, I need some time to, you know, to grieve over the Punto that has just, just left us or will, will be leaving us. I don't think it makes sense to get one, but you know, I don't know how tunable that 1.4 liter engine is. Uh, maybe, maybe something for the future, but definitely not for now. What about Fiat proper? I could get a multipler. Nothing says sexy like a Fiat multiplier. Now this is the um, the facelift multiplier, which is, I think, 
misses the point. I love the Mark 1 multipler. I think it is a very, very cool car. This one just looks like an MPV. I think it's had some of the character removed. But I do, I do honestly think, can we find a Mark 1 multipler? That, that would be awesome. Uh, right, there we go. Fiat, multipler. All right, do we have a Mark 1? We don't have a Mark 1. That's how much the the style was removed from the Mark II. The Mark II, even though theoretically it's probably going to be a better car, it's a newer car, it's got more modern engines, it is not as, you know, it is prized more than the Mark II. Um, it's just a bit... And they all come with a diesel engine. Boo, boring. Okay, that's a shame. So we're not going to be able to get a multiple budget. That is that is a little bit sad. Um, oh, there is a, a Barchetta. So, or is it a Barchetta? Who knows? Let me know. But... Oh, three and a half grand. Cam belt and tension was done in 2017. Okay, so it needs a new cam belt because you need to be doing that every four years on the 1.8. Um, you know, I do, the problem is I've already got a convertible and um, I don't think it's, technically I would have then a car, like across two cars, I would have four seats. But sadly, I think getting another convertible right now probably doesn't make any sense. So, but three and a half grand for a Barchetta or a Barchetta uh that that's pretty good that's pretty good value i think yeah that if i didn't already have the z3 i'll probably be calling that person up because uh, although it isn't broom yellow getting a, a, a barchetta for that much money is 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 pretty rare lancia or lancia um let's let's find uh let's see what we can find any lanchas lancia or lancia right so the cheapest <laughs> launcher is 16,995 and it is the uh, pretty fugly launcher Delta. So this is a two liter HF Integrale. I don't know much about the Mark II. Um, I'm much more of a fan of the Mark I, but it, it's, it's very yellow. Um, what is the performance of this? So features and spec, performance. 5.7 seconds to 60, 196 brake horsepower. So looking at the specs, 196 brake horsepower and 231 pound foot of torque. Do you think that's turbocharged? Or do you think that's naturally aspirated? Let's, let's, is there an engine bay shop? Uh, there's no engine bay. I don't know anything about these. Um, oh, and this one is has been dynoed at 235 brake horsepower. Okay, that's cool. But it is seventeen grand. That is that that would be a passion purchase for someone because these are not as well loved, interesting, or whatever as, as the Mark One. Um, kind of cool though. Let's see how much the car I'd love to buy, my dream car. Now you know I'm a massive, massive Sega Rally fan. You know so much so that right next to me there is a Sega Rally um, upright arcade cabinet. Uh, let's find a Lancia. Delta Evo 2. Oh, brilliant. It's just a mere 99,000 pounds. Oh, but look at it. It's red. It's gorgeous. Oh, it's so pretty. You know, oh. Okay, yeah, it does have, you know, plastics that, you know, feel like they've come from a, you know, a cracker or something. But just look at it. Isn't it pretty? Oh, yeah. I I've said this lots of times before but if i was ever a millionaire or a billionaire i would do a few things one i would buy myself a you know a lancia delta evo 2 second i would buy my brother a uh, toyota celica gt4 i would get them both done up in sega rally liveries and we'd take them rallying because that that is that is a hundred percent a dream that I've always had and it was awesome to have the opportunity to drive um, JM's car uh, his he had a Slinker GT4 which he was more than generous to allow me to drive and that was such a bucket list item I still would like a a chance an opportunity to drive a Delta but um, yeah I just don't know if that's ever gonna happen but if I was a millionaire these were the things that I would do sensible sensible purchases sadly I don't think I'm gonna get my uh, my Lancia dream just yet but something to monitor for hopefully we can find one in the future all right now let's let's move into the uh into the danger category 
Let's let's look at uh, how cheap we can get a Maserati. All right. Nothing says danger like an old Maserati. So the Maserati Quattroporte car, we all know that I love, uh, and I had to work very hard to not buy that uh, Quattroporte uh, Sport GTS that I did a review on um, a few months back. A phenomenal car, but it was just too much money for, for what I was willing to pay. And um, I think just, yeah, I just, I just couldn't justify it right now because 23,000 pounds is 100% fair price for that car, but it was just too much money. And, you know, when I'm trying to kind of sustain the channel and also, you know, ha kind of go, go through cars, the biggest challenge you will find with Maseratis is they are very, very hard to sell. And that's what's kind of in my head about sort of that Quattroporte. It's just, it was just too, it, it, you know, it's, they hang around. You look at every Maserati on Auto Trader and they just stick around because only passionate people buy Maseratis because essentially you do have Ferrari running costs for a car that isn't as worth as much as a Ferrari. So you really need to go in with your eyes open and few people really are, you know, would commit to a, to a Maserati because even though they're more reliable than the 3200 GT, they are still just, the running costs are high and a lot of people don't want to pay them. And also, parts are getting a little bit harder to find. So suspension um, components, uh, subframes for the Quattroporte, door locks for the 4200 and the Grand Spot, all these sorts of things are getting increasingly hard to find where they are not as difficult, say, on a Ferrari. So I can see why people just go, go elsewhere, but they are fabulous cars and they are uh, passionate and they evoke uh, such a... A wonderful feeling in you they they really have soul even you know what would ordinarily be a humdrum executive saloon is just an event 4.7 liter v8 six speed i think zf gearbox beautifully handling all that sort of stuff now this is obviously just the bulk standard s so that will probably have the skyhook uh, adaptive suspension which is expensive when it fails and actually might be impossible to get brand new ones uh, and so you probably have to replace it with some, some aftermarket suspension. This one has a mere 134,000 miles, but it is only six and a half grand. Yes, I think that's above budget and you caught me bang to rights, you know, put me in jail. But I think that is a, a fabulous, fabulous car to, to, to get around in. And, you know, at six and a half grand, you know, as long as you get it checked out, that's probably going to be okay. I think the main thing is just looking for for rust on the subframe, but I've already looked at the MOT history on this one. There's no rust mentioned. Go in with your eyes open, have a good look around, especially underneath. And for six and a half grand, it's a good way to get around, but it is out of budget, but I do like it. Um, what other Maseratis can we get? Um, for merely just double our target budget, you could get a Maserati uh, 4200 uh, Cambio Corsa. So this is the, um, the Cambio Corsa is the sort of the Maserati F1 gearbox. So an acquired taste, much like Maserati itself. Uh, but again, 4.2 litre, 390 brake horsepower, fabulous looking car interior wise, and only eight grand. And yeah, I think it's a, it'll be a nice car. Uh, it is double the budget though, but it is quite nice. 222, 222. I don't know how you, how you pronounce that one, but that's a pretty cool looking car. It is 10 grand now, so more than double our budget. Budgets are more just like guidelines, right? Um, they're always meant to be broken. Ooh, and there's a manual coupe. So you've got the, the 4200 GT that indicates that it has a manual gearbox, uh, which is very rare. Most people went for the F1 gearbox. The 4200 is the majority, I think at least 80% of them were specified with the automatic F1 gearbox. And so the manual is is very, very rare. It's not the most amazing gear shift out of the factory. I know it can be adjusted, so it can be a lot more um, um, more engaging and a lot more fun to, to use. But you don't have the same concerns of, of clutch wear you have or with the uh, Cambio Corsa gearbox. And also you don't fear traffic as much as you do with the Cambio Corsa gearbox. So getting into a, a manual, I think, is actually quite cool. And it's always going to be more engaging to stir the gears yourself. So that's kind of cool. £10,000, way out of budget, but wouldn't that be nice? There are definitely some potential options though. 
in what we found today. You know, a uh, Arbath Grande Panto could be potential. The um, a GTV probably a Twin Spark, or maybe an Alfa Romeo 166 Super Luso if I can find one in manual. Yeah, you know, three three grand, four grand for those. The cheapest way into a Buso V6. What do you think? What car should I buy? What brand should I check out? Alfa Romeo, Fiat, Lancia, probably not Lamborghini. Let's face it, or something else, something completely different. What would you buy for four thousand pounds? Would be a good fun four-seater project car. Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, drop a like, drop a subscribe, and with that, I'll catch you down the road.